Hello. It's a lovely Sunday evening here in Utah in the mountains. Welcome everyone. Happy Sunday evening in this uh, fresh part of summer. If you're jumping on with me, please say hello in a comment where you're tuning in from. It's uh, 8.21 p.m., a little bit late. I've been wanting to do this broadcast ever since I got home from my 17-day 17, 17 trip to Ireland, Scotland, and England. And I'm just doing it because there hasn't been a great time to do it. So hope your summer's going well. And I have a few updates about some things happening that you're go going to want to take note of. Tag someone, say hello in a comment. Let me uh, see who's on with me here. I'm Carol Tuttle, the creator of Dressing Your Truth and Energy Profiling. I've written 10 books and I love helping people improve the quality of their lives. I have a fabulous online healing center that is just waiting to help you change your life for the better. Life can get pretty intense. Hi, Jay Nickel. I feel like I know you without having, I don't think we've ever met in person, but I feel like you definitely are a sister I've never had because I don't have any sisters. So here's what's up before I get into the countries because I typed all those countries I traveled to. Mark on your calendar Wednesday this week at 1.30, I'm going to be announcing the next uh, product that I'm adding to my anti-aging skincare line that I am pumped about. It's taken well over a year to formulate this, to get it correct, to uh, get it ready to bring to the marketplace, and I am jazzed. So I want you to be the first to know about it at 1.30 on Wednesday. Wednesday of this week. And then also for those of you that were so, so great to follow along with my travels, I did post a reel on Friday of every outfit because I kept saying I, for the first time, packed a tra um, capsule travel wardrobe using a four color palette and two neutrals. And I ended up putting 21 different outfits together because a 10 day portion of our trip was a cruise that required both casual day wear and a little dressier evening wear. Nothing super formal by any means, but you definitely had to look like you'd gotten dressed up, kind of like turn of the head kind of dressed up. And so I posted that reel showing every outfit. And then for my lifestyle members, I put together a collage grouping the outfits on those the four colors that were the predominant color choices of that capsule travel wardrobe. And then I listed my packing I put in my post the packing list, how many items that I took, not necessarily the colors of each, because you wouldn't, you know, I didn't say, I basically two jeans, four slacks. Once you've got the color and the neutrals ready to go, you can pick whatever colors you want in any of the items list. So look for that if you haven't seen it. I got a lot of requests for that. And Randy's saying, I loved your capsule wardrobe post. Thank you. They were a lot of fun to do. I, I learned, the more I live true to who I am, the more I again feel confident and assured that when I'm meant to do something, the energy will be there to do it. And it really was effortless to do those posts. And let's give a big shout out. My husband, I told him not to sit here. I said, if you sit here, I'm going to flip the camera on you. Thank you. Everyone give a round of applause Hello, to my everybody. cameraman. I'm so excited to see you. My cameraman. He did he he's really learned how to take good shots of me. We're a good team. I'm like, you gotta go to more countries. So let's talk about how I type countries. As a recap, Ireland, to my surprise, didn't surprise me that it was type three, but a three one. Very much a three one. And for your perspective, for those of you in the United States, it's about the size of West Virginia. So it's a small country. We're not talking about large geographical areas for any of these countries. And I got the whole geography what's what over there on this trip. I'm very type three in how I learn about um, the world and its geography and uh, nations, countries, and the, the country lines and borders and things like that, because I was not aware that the very top of Northern Ireland was independent of the rest of Ireland in the south. And so uh, didn't, 
I did go into that, but I would say they're both the same, 3-1. And then over into Scotland, the energy shifted considerably, and we went into a type 4 secondary 2 energy in Edinburgh. We went, we were in the Her Herbides, northern, most northern part that's the closest to Iceland, where it's a very cool weather pattern all year round even in the summer it's not much more than 60 uh, you know a hot day would be 65 degrees and then went down the east coast of scotland into edinburgh and that's where it was distinctly very clear to me that it was a type 4 secondary 2 country and the there are a lot of tourists there. We were there the day after King Charles had been uh, had received the crown jewels of Scotland. So there were a lot of people in the city. And many of you know that J.K. Rowling lived there, and she is also a type 4. I'm pretty sure. Is she a 2-4 or 4-2? Somebody straighten that out for me. I've typed so many well-known people, but she's that energy combo. And then uh, the... Ex just the the lull with that many people and still sort of a hum i think it was really loud no honking horns that you see in more high movement countries nobody yelling you know it was just you could feel distinctly that four two energy and then moving into england and what i found to be so fascinating is the actual energy of the country itself is a four one with the presence of the monarchy there having been its uh, really a strong influence of the culture there for so many centuries. But the populace itself is predominantly leading with the type one energy, especially women. The 50 and up age group particularly has a strong representation as one, two, type one, two sec yeah, as their expression of energy. But that made sense to me that they would feel supported by a type 4 one, a lighter expression of a type 4 energy that was uh, really appealing to them because it's a structure that holds in play the opportunity to support them in the ceremony and the, uh, the pomp, and, pomp and circumstance, the, the expression, uh, the parades, all the, the fanfare that that's very much uh, appreciated by type ones and they enjoy that and it's a very colorful uh in their fashion they do dress very true to their type one energy so the uh thing i also noticed is i it's just again in the psychology of fashion here in the united states that i've studied for so many decades now that the cruise itself had a predominance of citizens from the United States that were in the 60 and up age group and they are representative of the kind of the tail end of the baby boomer when we were raised in the 60s and 70s when feminism became sort of on the forefront and sort of this backlash to being the first real strong um, being a counter message to beauty being something that that was a was so made of women an object that you know in the 50s it was overdone and in the 60s there was a big backlash to the kind of fashion kind of being forced on women and women with the hippie movement more flower child type stuff that was going on the uh, a lot of women s stepped away from fashion and the makeup and they were either raised by mothers that were real sort of opposed to it and didn't have an interest or they themselves just kind of went down a different direction or they had moms like I did that were too overly influenced by it in a reference to comparing themselves and so my point is that I saw on this cruise ship that were predominantly women from the United States in the more mature age brackets that weren't really knowing how to put style together that it was they were lost in their effort and this was it's a little bit sarcastic but in my type 3 I said to my husband I feel like I'm in a Land's End catalog because it was all very functional and it's what was being worn and I thought the world needs me the United States needs me because then traveling to Europe 
that's where I saw the women that knew how to put together style, kind of the formula of function, practical style equals great travel outfits. And that was my goal with my capsule travel wardrobe. So I hope I helped some of you. So ladies, go out there, put your those capsule wardrobes together and uh, represent us well from the United States. And kudos to those of you from other countries that have that sense of style as a function of loving and appreciating yourself, not because it, you have any more value by looking fashionable or stylish, but it's an it's a way to express your truth and to really honor yourself by taking that time because it doesn't take a lot of time in our world of dressing your truth. Now, let's get back. How do I know a country's tight? I learned something from going to England. It can't always be based on the predominance of what type of people live there for the fact that the predominant energy, dominant expression energy type of England is type four when I saw more type one people adults. And so what is the history of the country as a big player and what has had the biggest influence in the culture? Now, a lot of times that's the country and the people of the country, then it builds the culture around them. Mexico is a very good example of that. It's very type one, their music, their dress, how colorful they are. The Latino music to this day is very upbeat and pops. Uh, they like siestas, they love, they're very, you know, social people. You go to Thailand, it's a very type two country. The people are much more, uh, and a lot of that was their, their religious influence in being more just humble and the type two element of just showing reverence and that humility. And so definitely different, con most countries that I've been to, and it's up to about 60 by now, I have seen that it is whatever the dominant expression of the people are, they build the cultures that create then the energy expression of the country. England was a phenomenon in that. And rather than studying culture and all of the little things in that the history, I can get a hit on it. I get a reading on it. I get a sense of it, a feeling of it. And that's where Ireland was really clear. And then I start to notice what is it that would support that to see if that hit, that sense of tuning into it is actually accurate. And there's many things in their culture, their manner, the way that they they have a very strong independent quality about them that I then can find all kinds of things that say, yeah, that is the case. And so typing countries is looking at the collective energy of the country's expression. Are there other, can you go to individual towns, cities? For sure, you can pinpoint within that other energy types but at large, the fuller expression, the bigger expression of the country as an entire collective energy does have a dominant and secondary energy type. The United States, I get asked about that quite a bit. It's young. It's been built from a place of, um, from a place of independence. Uh, it, as a country, it is very eclectic. There's been a lot of feeding from other countries. And so it doesn't have a distinct, it's a very young energy. So I, does it lead with type three or type four? Not necessarily, but very young energy. Definitely a lot of type three and type four energy in the United States. It's not yin, it's not soft. It's not gentle. We look at the media we watch, you know, hello, who went and saw Mission Impossible? That's another conversation, how type two men love Fast and Fur Furious, Mission Impossible. What are the other ones? You love those oh, racing scenes and big explosions. Uh, oh yeah, but I mean, that, yeah. It's like fast, both my type two son and my type two husband went and saw Mission Impossible, different days, but they both saw it within the week. So that's another conversation. 
So United States, really, can we type states and big cities? Yes, we definitely can do that. And we've done some of that through the years that'll come out. Uh, but there's a lot going on in the United States and we can't pinpoint that distinctly because of just the fact there's a much, uh, it doesn't fit the character, you know, it's not as defined in its character for the fact that it's quite young and it's even being a country. So there you go. Any questions regarding that? And uh, let me know. I'll look through the comment thread real quick. Before I sign off, tomorrow we start the three-week online course called Self-Confidence Ignited. And I wrote a little thing today in the Healing Center. And, and I, I like to think about these things. And we'll end with this thought because I want to invite you to join in on that. Everyone would benefit from this course. Because truly, it is your self-confidence that's the underlying factor in what you move forward in doing or hold yourself back from. What you process internally, your point of view of yourself, your self-talk. There's so many things that are tied into that influence self-confidence. And when it is fragile, weak, or non-existent, you're missing out on opportunities that are meant to be correct for you to move forward in and you hold yourself back and easily talk yourself out of it and that is just not what god wants for you the more self-confident we are the more we can show up and truly serve and even learn our life purpose here so i said do you know the difference between self-worth, self-esteem, and self-confidence? Tomorrow, I'm excited to start the newly branded three-week self-confidence ignited course. Take a moment and see how well you are doing with self-worth and self-esteem. It's these two inner qualities that are operating in tandem, both as emotional and intellectual functions of how we feel and think about ourselves. It's our self-worth and self-esteem that determines how much self-confidence we have or don't have. Where are you at with all of this? I've had to heal both my self-worth and self-esteem, but boy, has it been worth it as now I have an authentic self-confidence that supports me in living my truth and being more honoring of others as to where, to wherever they, to honoring of others to wherever they are on their journey. So think of it as, your self-worth is your how valuable do you feel a sense of value that was that was established really your point of reference for that in your childhood were you valued were your emotions honored were you supported in living your truth were you acknowledged for who you are so self-worth is a starting to establish very young self-esteem is our opinion of ourselves how do i you know how do i what, what's your esteem of yourself do you have a positive esteem do you have a negative one you'll know by your self-talk if you have negative, critical self-talk, you have low self-esteem. Both of those feed into self-confidence. Confidence is a manner of feeling assured, feeling, uh, it's hard to find another word, feeling confident moving forward, feeling confident around other people, feeling confident in wh whether it's something you're moving forward in that's new or you're well-versed in. It's a confidence. Now, when you're confident, you may not have a lot of, it may feel new and you'll feel nervous. You can have a lot of self-confidence and still be nervous when you're moving into new experiences. But it's that confidence that moves you through the nervousness. And so join us. It's really inexpensive. It's $69. You'll get through the three weeks. If you've never been a member of the Online Healing Center, it's First two weeks are free. You'll get six weeks total. I hope you'll stay involved, keep going. It's a beautiful, incredible Facebook community that supports each other. And it's all online. We start as a group tomorrow, and then the group is supporting each other as we move through the course with my additional support and my support team's additional support. And you'll come out of it on the other end with more self-worth, more self-esteem, improved self-confidence, and it'll just keep growing. So remember, Wednesday, what time? That's right, 1.30. I'm announcing the new anti-aging product that I've been working on for about 15 months that uh, we're going to be releasing. I'm excited to announce that on Wednesday. And tomorrow's the self-confidence course. And check out those, the reel with all my tra uh, capsule travel wardrobe. And if you're a lifestyle member, which I hope you are, sign up. 
you will uh, be able to see that post I put up with my packing list. So go to healwithcarol.com to get on, to get involved and start with us tomorrow. Thanks everyone. You're all amazing people.